Between Hopkins County Board of Education and Stars National regarding cultural sensitivity concerning children living in poverty and homelessness. I think there was a contract in your packet. I guess my question is, uh, and I, I read this, and of course this is a contract, and I, I just wanted to know what the, uh, what the scope of this is. Uh, do we do this with the entire student body of our school system, uh, or is it for us? Uh, or is it for teachers or administrators or who's it for? I mean, <laughs> you know, to me, it, it's one of those things when you talk about regarding culture sensitivity concerning children living in poverty and homelessness. Homelessness, I understand. Poverty, we've had that situation in Hawkins County as long as I can remember. Uh, I just wonder what that, what kind of an impact does that have on whatever we're trying to do to educate our children? Mr. Hickson, you want to try and stack with that? Or you want to call on one of your staff? It looks like it's two-day training, cultural competency, McKinney Ditto Act, June the 6th and 7th of this year. Training for staff. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. And I would like to call on Michelle to address the questions, Michelle Harless, uh, Dr. Michelle Harless. Um, I do know that uh, McKinney Vento is a, is a federal program. We did use it, utilize that uh, particular uh, grant money uh, and training in Southern California as well. And it is meant to uh, educate our staff uh, toward the, the cultural needs of our of our impoverished students, uh, making sure that they're aware of the signs and um, indications that may may indicate they need help, whether social, emotional, or physical. But I'll turn it over to Dr. Harless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nixon. Uh, yes, this um, two-day training would be um, purchased with funds from our McKinney Vento subgrant. The McKinney Vento subgrant is a competitive grant that we apply for every couple of years and um, this the grant um, it's a, a very structured grant you can only spend that money on certain things one of the, the items that you can spend the money on is professional development for um, your faculty and staff and so this uh, professional development would be for faculty and staff to help them um, with uh, understanding uh, the needs of our children that are at risk for being homeless or those that are currently homeless. Um, at any, um, usually by the end of the year, we will have identified about 65 of our students in Hawkins County as homeless. And so this just helps to um, them, faculty to understand how to identify them, what barriers they may have, and, and what we can do as a district with McKinney Vento funds to help, um, to help alleviate some of those issues. Thank you for the information. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the training and service agreement between Hawkins County Board of Education and STARS Nashville. Motion's been made to approve uh, approval of training for STARS Nashville. Is there second. a second? Thank second. you, Ms. Craig. Any further discussion? Here you go, Ms. Michael, please call the roll. Craig, yes. <coughs> Christian? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Charles? Yes. Larkin? Yes. Shed? Yes. Over the years that I've been on the school board, which is over four years now, hitting on five, we have sent teachers and people and groups of people all over the country specifically looking at different things uh, with different ideas and everything. and. Uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, we as a board have never received any feedback as to what we have accomplished in the education of our children from sending all these people to all these places to do all these things. Now, maybe there's information that I haven't been getting that you guys have been getting, but I don't, I haven't seen anything. And I, I am concerned, and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm concerned about the level we're at in our system. Yeah, we got a few reward schools, a few, but I'd like to see, personally, I'd like to see our high schools there. Uh, and uh, 
I applaud Mr. Hickson for an email that I got from him that included a line that I have been harping on for four and a half years. And uh, I just I just wonder if, if it's worth if it's worth it uh, to spend all the money that we spend to do these things. I'm sure for the folks that's going and wants to go, I'm sure that it, it is worth every penny of it to them. But I'm not sure I've ever seen any results from any of it. Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to say as a student who's went on these trips, I went I went to the Skills USA, both state and national competitions for three years. Um, Excuse me. We're not talking, not about, talking about the student going. We're not talking. About, about we're not talking about students. I, I, if I, if, you, if I said that wrong, then I apologize. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking. This is not about students. This is not about students. I want to see uh, if I'm going to approve to spend the taxpayers' money for people to go to uh, uh, to find out. I guess. It talks, it uses a title, Leader in Me Symposium and Leader in Me in, Initiative. Uh, are they? Are we sending people to find out if they're leaders or not? Is that what we're doing? No, it's a, it's a program. It's, I realize it's a program, but, what are, but what's the benefit to our system as a whole if we send one person from one place and 16 from another place? How does that equate into enhancing the education of the children in these particular schools. I do. Go ahead. I do know that um, last year, uh, last year, year before last, this program was brought before us as a board to accept, and we we did not. However, Mount Carmel took the initiative to explore and learn about the leader in the program. I also took the initiative to call several schools in Kingsport City Schools that are under the Leader in Me program. I received nothing from the principals but praise on the program. It teaches our children how to become leaders in their schools. And this program has been uh, exemplified in Mount Carmel right now. My granddaughter attends Mount Carmel. And I can see differences. When you walk in that school, the children are the leaders. And it's teaching them to go forward as leaders. So I, I can attest to that program. And I, I do think we have another principal out here that would like to speak to it. Well, uh, under, under, the, under those conditions, I'm just curious because I want to know, because I can see we're going to have to make some big changes in our system at some point in time. Uh, if, and I, you know, giving Mr. Hickson the benefit of the doubt to, to achieve these goals uh, for whatever they are, whether it's ours or his, doesn't matter. But the point of it is, is how, what does this, how is this implemented into the curriculum of under the state guideline? I, I do know that we have a principal that would like to speak, but before she comes up, I, I do want to say that uh, part of the expectations we have as, as, a, as a school system, um, and I can tell the system that was in place prior to me coming, is that the principals are absolutely responsible for, if they approve, if they um, agree to send teachers to these programs and identify the funds and put the applications in front of you, then the expectation is on their shoulders that they implement fully at their school site. With that being said, uh, if you feel as a board member that we could do a better job of showcasing what comes of these professional development opportunities and those types of things, then perhaps there's a better forum for us to then showcase that data that comes out of them. I will say that that is a local expectation to the school sites, to the departments, to the individuals that do go to the trainings, that they bring that training back. They are then trained trainers and they implement across the board with the help of their principal and the oversight of the principal. Um, if we do identify things that are not being implemented and the principal and I have a talk, for example, or any of our supervisors and the principals have a talk and that's not being implemented, then we are not all about sending staff to something that we will not implement then and, and make, a, make a, our best efforts out of that training. So with that being said, I'd like to turn it over if you're, if you're willing to hear our principal here. Uh, Ms. Price, briefly if you could, uh, I will say this, during Board Appreciation Week, I did attend a uh, 
from a meeting at her school, and I will say that her students were very gracious in having me there, welcoming me. It was the students, not the staff first, and um, they were very, they had been taught, I could tell the leader in me, because I was aware of that program from last year, I saw it demonstrated firsthand there. So thank you, Ms. Price. Well, I appreciate the chance just to speak for a moment. Um, I do want to say that um, we have begun the Leader in Me book study. We used our Title I funds to support our e-plan. Uh, in our e-plan, it talks about working with at-risk students, but the Leader in Me program actually gives all students an opportunity to find their gifts and become leaders. And so um, I think that you all are familiar, it's a very expensive program if you get the Leader in Me backing from their organization. So we are implementing this ourselves. We have started three weeks ago and I can't tell you how excited our staff is. Every Wednesday we're meeting for book studies. They're reading two books, The um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Franklin Covey, which this is based on, and the Leader in Me book, which shows us how to implement that into our school. So to give a bunch of busy teachers two books to read, and now they're asking each other, have you read chapter three? It's very exciting to see what's happening. Um, our students have already started some leadership positions in their school. They're running the cameras, uh, putting up announcements, doing some things. So we are learning. The seven habits actually, um, the first one is to be proactive. And that's what we feel like we are doing is hitting the soft skills that the community members expect from us. It teaches children how to um, look you in the eye and say good morning, shake a hand, you know, the things that they're not being um, met with. So those kinds of things we are trying to put into place and um, we are hoping that you all will support us. It is several teachers that we are asking to send to this school. I have never sent this many teachers before. We have seven teams of teachers. We have related <coughs> arts teachers and special ed. And what we want to do is support the second habit, which is to begin with the end in mind. We want to take our teachers, get them excited, and see what will happen when they go into a school that is already supported by Leader and Me. So um, we do want to put this into place. All of the teachers that we have chosen, we have chosen specifically because we know that they will bring it back to our school. They have the professional day available through the county that is provided to them to go on this. We have Title I funds to pay for the travel and the expenses, and we have the coverage through um, our substitutes who are willing to be there. So um, we did appreciate you all coming the day that we invited you, but I would like to invite all of our school board members to come to our school anytime you want, because we're about to explode with some exciting things. So um, thank you for the opportunity, sure. and um, I do hope that you'll approve this. Ms. Hudson, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I just want to echo, you know, having, this is my first year at Churchill Intermediate School and coming from Mount Carmel, um, I was able to see the benefits of the Leader Me program and to, uh, to be able to share that with my faculty at Churchill Intermediate and to have them be so excited. Um, I just, it's a great program, it's a great initiative and I know our faculty, Mr. Gibson, they would be more than happy to come back and and share with you um, what what we are going to be doing at Churchill Intermediate. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. I'd be curious for me. I like to read the books. We'll get you guys. <laughs> You'll love it. <laughs> because I have no clue whatsoever what you just told me. Yeah. What that what that is. It seems like it must be awful exciting, and you know. We bad as preachers don't get too excited about anything, but well, I think uh, Kevin may be someone that you'll, you'll I, enjoy. I, mean, I would like to know what you know. You, you bring me a title, you bring me a title, but there's no information in this packet about what it is. So I think that's what you're talking about is follow up information. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we do with it. I mean, I, I you know, and I don't know. It might be the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I don't have a clue. But I know one thing: it's up to me to approve a lot of money be spent to do it. At our county meeting of time, we probably skip over some important things like that. We'll do a better job of that. Mr. Hicks, well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion okay. to approve. Motion made a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Frank? Yes. Christian? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Carl? Yes. Chesney? Yes. Clark? Yes.